Hello! I know I don't look my best, I just got home from school, biking, and um... This is a weird day to post a video. Um, at least at the time I'm recording this, this is a Thursday. It's strange. Um, and I just put out a video on my new secondary. Uh, hope you watch that. Uh, link in the description. But I just feel a lot of pressure to put out uh, more videos for you guys as it has been the school year just starting and I haven't been able to put out as many videos or mods as I would like. So. Today we're going to do something simple and something very important, and that is loadouts. So it was bound to happen eventually that I would have to talk about loadouts. So your loadout is very important. You can't just run around with a rough cut and just, just, you know, you can do that. You can tag people out with that, but are you going to be effective? No, eight-shot shotgun, you're not going to be effective running around with that and nothing else. That's just not how it works. So, I'm going to be talking about my personal philosophy behind gearing up a nerf and what I, my best advice is that I can give you behind gearing up for nerf and what blasters to modify, to use, and to buy to make you the most effective nerfer that you can be and to have the most fun flinging foam that you can possibly have. Let's talk primaries first. So, a primary is going to be what you need to base your entire loadout off of. So, obviously, that's going to be your first choice. So, there are really three categories for primary blasters. The most common, at least at this point, is flywheels. So, um, this is a Nerf Strife. It has uh, four IMRs in it, um, which can be seen in my IMR video. Link in the description to that as well. But... This is a flywheel blaster, and you may be thinking it looks like a pistol, which it kind of does. Um, I don't really use this as a pistol because it's magazine-fed, and I'll get to why I don't agree with magazine-fed um, secondaries in a moment. Uh, but this is a great workhorse, and this is what a lot of people use. There's also the rapid strike, and um, uh, I got the hyperfire. There's lots of options. Uh, the regulator just came out, which I would highly advise, um, which is my actual primary is a regulator base, and I'll talk about that later. Um, so there's that, and flywheels are loud. You gotta take that into account. They use batteries, they're loud, but you can get insane ranges and faster firing speed than any other ones. And say something like Strife, I can just... Done. But, if I'm using something like the Tri-Strike, which is a great blaster, stock is one of the best. Okay, so I'm going to have to pull that back, take it out, and usually the magazine releases aren't as good, and then take another one and put it back in, and then push it forward, and then I can fire. So, it is a, a little bit of a slower reload, even though it is using the same magazines, um, but... Things like springers like this are much more quiet, and um, that that is uh, that is a good thing. I mean, this. Oh, um, see what I mean with that reload speed? Uh, this. like a freaking chainsaw or lawnmower. You might like that. Maybe you're a heavy guy. You just go out right into it. But something like this. Or that's much quieter. However, springers are still pretty loud in some ways. Uh, just priming it. That's eh. Uh, also, this tri strike is squeaky. That's a uh, flaw with the tri strike. And the firing, pretty eh. Um, squeaky trigger. Uh, so one thing, if you really want quiet, is the third main category, and that is. Stringers. Now, stringers in mostly include things like um, the Dreadbolt is one, uh, but as far as dart-fed stringers, um, you're going to have the uh, Crossbolt and the Rebel uh, code, code Breaker Bow. Um, and there's a lot of reasons to use that. Now, the crossbolt is one of my favorite blasters because it is insanely comfortable, and that's why it is part of my primary banshee, which I'll get to later, but it, it, they're so comfy. The bullpup thing, that's great. 
Uh, I have had the chance to use the Codebreaker crossbow. That is also pretty comfortable. It's a little, I, I don't know, it feels kind of cheaply made, but, um, so, uh, the cro those are very, very quiet. Um, I, my crossbolt is in the shop right now. Look forward to a crossbolt mod in the future. All I'll say is that it's going to be my HVZ primary. Mm -hmm. Teaser. Um, yeah, so, anyway, and then, uh, they're just, they're very quiet. Usually they're, like, crossbow kind of things, which, eh, but you can change that. You can cut down the arms and put that down, which is a pretty common mod, um, and one that I really enjoy. Um, and you, it doesn't even look like a crossbow anymore. It just looks like a rifle or something, which is great. Um, so stringers are quiet. They usually have a little bit slower firing rate because, um, they're like stringers. They're obviously not as fast as a full auto or semi-auto blaster like Strife where you can just spam darts. But, they're also a tiny bit slower than springers because most springers have pump, uh, have, uh, uh slam fire. So, that is something to consider. Now. There's two more categories, and that is air blasters, and if you're considering using an air blaster, <sighs> air blasters can do a lot of things. They can be very accurate, they can fire very hard, very far, very fast, very versatile. You have to consider that you have to pump them, but if you pump them once or twice after every time that you fire, fire then you're going to be more effective. The best advice I can give you about air blasters is don't single them, okay? Just don't do it. It's not worth it because if you single a drain blaster or a titan tank and you chip a concrete wall or just totally destroy someone's face at a war, then no one's going to be able to use normal air blasters like a Busby Destiny because, oh, it's air powered, you can't use that. Don't ruin it for everyone else. Never single a drain blaster or a titan tank or any any air blaster. Never single it because it is a bad idea and you shouldn't do it, okay? Just don't. Use it as a shotgun. Use it as some kind of SMG machine gun. But don't do it, okay? Don't single them. That's all I have to say about that. I'm not getting into air blasters. Ugh. Now, there's one more very small category, and that is electronic springers. They don't make these anymore, however they really should, and those are spring-powered blasters like a rough cut or a tri-strike, except they're full-auto, semi-auto, like a flywheel blaster, like a strife. How can you take these... Stick them together and make a blaster. Well, you have an electronic springer, and that's where it pulls back the spring and releases it as many times as you pull the trigger or hold down the trigger using batteries. So it's basically automatically priming it and releasing it for you. Not like double action, but similar. So, you're either going to have the stampede, or the good old-fashioned trusty swarm fire. Oh, I love this blaster. This used to be the granddaddy. Open face turret, full auto. Yeah, boy. Yeah. I love this gun. I got this when I was like six. Dart Zone had just come out. It was the biggest thing around then. And this was just amazing. I could barely hold it up. And... I'm so sad to say that because I lived in the frozen tundras of Appleton, Wisconsin for a while, when I moved back to my home state of Texas, it seems that I have lost the stock, which makes me so mad because this stock is beautiful. Look at and this shell is just beautiful, and I just want to... Okay, sorry. I kind of went crazy there. I'm sorry, but you know, can you imagine if this was like air powered and it was just like, just like, yeah, that'd be cool. Anyway, um, so electronic speakers are great. A lot of people love those, and Nerf should really bring them back. 
I think, uh, I think Drac, maybe, or Coop, uh, I think one of them maybe mentioned in one of their videos that they, that they had asked about that, and Hasbro said that they wanted to, but they were too expensive to make, and I can definitely see why, it's so much easier to make flywheels, and, I mean, let's be honest, flywheels are great, but, electronic sp springers will always have a place in my heart. And this was, I think, my first Nerf, my second Nerf blaster ever. I I got a Night Finder, like the old-fashioned Night Finder, this, and then I got a Jolt. And that was, that was my first ever Nerf loadout. Man, that brings back memories. I must have been like six and a half, maybe seven. Oh, man. Anyway, so that's great. So that's something you really have to consider when you're thinking about your loadout, is what you're going to use as your primary. Then you have to think about, do you want a drum fed, a magazine fed, or um, do you want some kind of internal magazine? You know, they're a front loader, there's lots of different options. Now, the advantages to a, here's my minimized lawbringer, to a turret is that you can just stick it in there. And still be firing. I could be firing and sticking it in there this whole time. All that time. Still be, still be firing. And uh, all the wire reloaded. Then, you can have magazines where it's great because you can just... Okay, maybe it went a little bit too far with that reloading thing, but I mean... Uh, if you have lots of preloaded magazines, then they are great, and that's why magazines are so freaking popular. Plus, you can use them in springers, flywheels, pretty much uh, most Nerf blasters use magazines. That was a whole thing where they were like, everything has to use a magazine. <laughs> okay, sorry, I can't be the only one that, okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, but then there's things like, um... If you're scavenging a lot, you can't take the magazine because you have to take it out, take darts off the ground, and keep loading them in, and that's not something people want to do. Um, I am working on a system where you can have partially open magazines where you can kind of stick it in the front, but that's all modification. But that's all done during modification, so you may not want to do that. Um, you can also just use drums. That's the smart and easy thing to do, is use something with drums. If you have a strife, but you want to scavenge a lot, get a barricade or even the stockade, and while they are old, there's lots of modifications out there for them that you can do to make them almost as good as a tier zero strife, but to be honest, this is a little bit better, but if you want it to be drum fed, you can have pretty much the exact same blaster. So stepping away from primaries, let's move on to secondaries. But first, the main rules of primaries are figure out if you want a flywheel, a springer, a stringer, or even an air blaster if you like that, or an electronic stringer like a stampede or a swarm fire. Then you're going to figure out if you want to have magazines, it turtle magazines, some kind of drum, or open face turret, or some other loading system. Maybe even you want a chain fed. It's all in the eye of the beholder. One more thing I want to get done before we move on to talking about secondaries is that a lot of people that are new to the hobby are going to ask about attachments. What attachment should I use to make my blaster look cool? Well, you should, you probably have some kind of nice stock. If you're going to have a strife like this, yeah, that's good. You just have a little SMG, but it really improves the feel of it if you just have a nice worker stock or even the lightning storm stock, which is what this is based off of. Uh, this is a nice stock because being a tall, a tall, at least for my age is, you know, for taller people, this is going to be great because it's a lot longer than most nerf stocks. When you get into things like barrel attachments, eh, looks pretty cool, you know, now it's kind of a rifle, but that barrel drag, that's going to increase it, especially if you have a really long one, um, 
But if it's modified, it's not going to affect it. It's This strife with IMRs in it, if I were to put on this, it's going to end up getting, like, 80 FPS, which is what it would... That's, like, about what it would be getting normally. Or maybe this is XD, so, like, 100 FPS... Um, so it's still gonna be a little bit better if you have a shorter barrel like this, but, um, still. So don't use these unless you have modifications, and then still probably don't use them. Uh, sights, go ahead. Sights are great, having the little red dot sights, it's nice to just be able to, like, mm, but don't aim with them. There's no point. There's no point in even aiming a Nerf Blaster like this. It's best just to go... Just, like, try to pretend that you're in, like, a first-person shooter, so that... You know, your gun's gonna be like this, you know, just hit marker right in the center of the screen. You know, just, you don't need to aim with Nerf Blasters because it's a Nerf Blaster. Just track where your darts are going and adjust. Um, sights are great though, they because they just look pretty cool. So if you want to go that way, go for it. But otherwise, the only thing that I would really recommend is having a nice stock. If you're doing modifications, then probably get some, integrate some kind of stock that has a magazine holder, like Banshee has a cross bolt, um, you know, you can do Stravens, don't, don't be mad at me, because the Strife and the Straven re-came out, so, you know, Stravens are no longer, like, evil, sinful things, but, you know, anyway, putting that aside, um, just be sure that if you're doing attachments, just make sure they're functional or they don't hinder the thing. So, like, you can have tactical attachments. That's all That's all great. But if it hinders the ability of your blaster, just don't do it. There's no point. So, really, stocks are great. Maybe a laser pointer if you have a good one. However, most wars won't even allow that. So, it's, it's all kind of iffy with attachments, but... Yeah, so I kind of went on a little bit too long with that part, but really just go with stocks. That's all you need. Now let's talk about secondaries. This is my minimized lawbringer. So, this is 12-shot revolving cylinder, and this is great because it's a cylinder. So, I can scavenge darts, which really fills a niche, um, and it has nice ammo holders, um... And it's hammer action, so I can use it one-handed while I'm fixing my blaster. And I know that many of you uh, might not agree with the whole one-handed, dual-wielding kind of idea. It is a little bit questionable, but, you know, it's at least a plus. So, you're gonna do something like that. Um, the rotation mechanism on this is messed up, and I don't know why. But, now, you might be out saying, it's a pistol, why is it your secondary? Because... Usually, I'm going to say, don't use pistols as your secondary. If you're going for a light, like, scout loadout, sure go with that. But I'd recommend with going something a little bit larger, like, maybe, like, a barricade or, like, a rough cut or something. Like, this is a good secondary because it's not big, but it's not really, sm like, super small either. It's just a nice shotgun. You know, um, it's spin that easily. It's, it's good. Rough cuts are solid. This used to be my secondary for years. But, because of so much use and so many modifications, so many paint jobs, this thing is just ugly and pretty much broken. So, you can see it's not even priming. Oh. Yeah, occasionally it'll fire, but, yeah, that's kind of broken at this point. But, rough cuts are great. Any shotguns are really great if you have some kind of assault rifle. So, like, if I have a strife... I might want to pair it with a rough cut because the strife has a quick rate of fire and it's magazine fed, but this might be able to get out a couple people. Um, it's very fast rate of fire, even faster than this. It's a little bit quieter. It's a little bit quieter than a flywheel. Actually, a lot quieter. <laughs> um, so, that's all good. So... Just consider your secondary. So really, the biggest rule for secondaries is it should always be based off of your primary. Biggest rule. If I have a rapid strike, I don't really, there's not much of a point to use 
a strife as my secondary. Also, really, you shouldn't be using magazine fed blasters as your secondary if you're using a magazine fed primary as your blaster. Because if your primary is magazine fed and your secondary is magazine fed, then you're gonna be like, oh snap, I'm out of ammo. Oh boom, strike, boom, 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 boom. You're gonna tag out those people, but then after that, how are you gonna reload? You've already used up all of your magazines on your rapid strike if you're completely out of ammo. So you just have that one magazine that you're gonna have to constantly take out stick darts into, put it back in, rev it up, and then fire. You're gonna have to do that over and over and over again. That was an amazing ricochet. Anyway. Just keeps coming back. Ugh, okay, so don't really use magazine feds as secondaries if you're using magazine feds as primaries. Now, if you were using something like, say, maybe like a barricade or some kind of like, um, anything with a drum or something, maybe a magnum super drum is your primary, then use magazine feds by all means. Magazine feds are great because you can just effortlessly reload and it, they're great. But if you're using two magazine fed blasters at once, that's not very smart because then you're gonna get caught with your pants down and you don't really want that in a nerf war. <laughs> so all I can tell you is it should do something that your primary doesn't. It should load differently than your primary. And maybe it should even take a different ammo type. I like to keep all mine the same, but if you have like a Boomco pistol that's like K26, like a sniper pistol, and you pair that with the rapid strike, that could be a really good combo because then they're different ammo types and you're gonna you're gonna increase your ammo consumption so that you can fire back most of what you have. I know that that's what Captain Xavier really likes. So, and that is definitely useful. So using different kinds of ammo, that's really important, but um, you might want to have it all compatible. There's so many ways you can go, but it should do something different and reload differently than your primary, and then you could be golden. That's about it. So let's move on to what most people don't even know about, and that is tertiaries. Here we have two good examples of tertiaries. Now, why do I bring up this rocket launcher from the Tri-Strike and the Triad? Well, the point of a tertiary, which most people don't even use tertiaries, or at least they don't call it a tertiary, is that they don't know what they're missing. A tertiary is when... You really, it's basically a secondary to your secondary. You got a rough cut as your secondary, then you have a triad. You run out of ammo completely for a primary, just strife, grab your rough cut, you run out of ammo or it jams, and you just need a little pistol. And this is going to be your last ditch effort. You're just going to pop off some quick shots, get a couple people out maybe, and then you're going to go back, reload, and get back into the action with your primary again. So, either you want something really small that you can just mount to a chest rig or something, um, or you're gonna want a substantial pistol, which is why I like the strong arm and the hammer shot as tertiary. Strong arm is a little bit better as a secondary than a, than a hammer shot, but I do think the hammer shot is the superior tertiary. So, either you're going to want a pistol, or you're going to want something very specialized. Now, why do I say you want something very specialized? This is a nice shield buster. I'm going to make another shield buster, probably out of some kind of mega blaster, in the future, so look forward to that. But, this has been just my shield buster since the Tri-Strike came out in, what, 2014-15? So, this is great, because I can just... Well, that was a little, um, yeah, <laughs> um, so this is a great shield buster. You can have this on a sling or on your back, and you can just flip this out and just, and then someone's shield is gone, you can go back 
attacked using your secondary or your primary, and now that their shield is gone, you're just gonna... And now you've gotten out one of the probably most powerful players on their team. So, that's really important to have some kind of shield buster, or at least carry a grenade with you. If, you're, if your games allow you to just throw your grenades, then that's what you want to do. But it is great to have little highly specialized blasters like this that can just shoot off. Um, my triad here is actually a shotgun pistol. Um, I just took out the air restrictor, so now it shoots a little bit, tiny bit better than a sledge fire because I put a scrap of um, Magnus pistol, the Mega Magnus spring into this. So now it's a little bit more powerful, but then it's not as powerful as it would be because it's a shotgun. So, um, but this is great because I can just spray a big shower of darts. You're not going to dodge this, and it's so small. So even if you're going to have something like a rough cut as a secondary, you just flip this out, shoot this in someone's general direction. They're getting tagged. That's, that's just what's going to happen. They get You get tagged. My rule is that usually if you're going to have three or more darts and you shoot it at someone at close range, they're usually not going to be able to dodge it. Um, if you shoot like three darts at longer range, they can usually do that. Um, but once you get into things like like Spectre Titan pistols, Maverick Titan pistols, any of the Titan tank, like eight shot absorber things, then it's just like kind of ridiculous. Um, then you're really not going to dodge that pretty much ever, but something like this is great. You can also use a normal triad, three shot jolt, who doesn't want that? I mean, come on, jolt's amazing. So, tertiaries, really your last ditch effort. Now, what I'm going to leave you with as far as your blasters is that you should have a good primary, probably magazine fed, but you want to think about if you're scavenging darts or not. You're going to want to modify it so it's pretty powerful, and that's about it. Choose something good. Then everything else is just going to revolve around that. That's, that's, that's pretty much what it is. So just think about your loadout, I guess is what I'm saying. Figure out what works best for you and what works with your gear best. Speaking of which, let's move on to gear. Why, hello. You might be wondering why I'm so stylish wearing my 2012 bandolier. Ah, beaver. Anyway, um, sorry about that. Um, you're gonna want ammo storage in your gear. This is good if you're running a light loadout. It's gonna hold some extra darts. You're gonna have some magazine storage, so if you want a magazine to be held, you can certainly stick that in there, but it doesn't really work great with 18 rounders. It really only goes up to 12, otherwise it just kind of gets uncomfortable, but uh, you're gonna also probably want some kind of chest rake. AK pouches are great because AK pouches will fit like two 18 round magazines very well. Um, my gear is coming up in a separate video, which is gonna be great. Um, I run around in combat boots and a black trench coat. Yeah, people say that I'm gonna burn up and die and be too hot, but I'm like, I'm from Texas. That's, that's part of life. Huh. Anyway, yeah, so you're just gonna want something that looks okay. You know, you don't wanna show up in something that looks bad. Uh, you're gonna want something that you can run around easily in and sweat in and it's not gonna stink. You're gonna be able to be very agile, do lots of things in, look a little bit, you know, it's you want it to look a little bit tactical, you know what I mean? And you're gonna want lots of ammo storage, lots of blaster storage, like holsters and slings, and you might even want some kind of face mask or helmet, especially if you're like a YouTuber. Um, I don't use any kind of mask just because I'm a very minor YouTuber, but I know that, like, Drac uses some mask that he has. He has the, the leather helmet. Um, so that's maybe smart if you don't really want people seeing your face. Um, but for the most part, you might want some, you're going to want some eye protection because highly modified blasters, if that shoots you in the eye, man, that's, that's, no, that's not going to be good. So, yeah, uh, gear, 
basically after you devise your blasters, then just make your gear around it. Just make your blasters first, buy your blasters, modify your blasters, and then just figure out gear that holds it and holds lots of ammo for it. And maybe if you need like water or some melee weapons or anything like that, think that in later. Maybe you won't even want a battle pack or a shield. So, I guess that's about all in, the, all in this video. Thank you for listening to my rambling and talking for ever. Each of these clips is like four minutes long. Man, I'm gonna... Man, sorry if I wore you guys out. But, um... So, basic rules of devising your loadout. Find a good primary. And then make a secondary that complements it. Then make a tertiary that does something very special, or is just a little plinker. You're going to get some people out. You might want to suicide jolt, just so that you can just run around. But if you're going to have a triad, that's basically a suicide jolt anyway. Um, and then, after that, just make gear that holds it. And holds lots of mags, holds lots of ammo, holds lots of turrets, holds... As much things that you can while looking spiffy and allowing you movement and to not look like a giant pig holding tons of ammo. That's my best advice. So, best regards, this has been Jackal Murph. I'm thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, it really helps my channel out a great deal. Um, I don't think I'll be uploading for a little bit. Uh, I'm, a <sighs> I'm actually getting a pygmy goat. Maybe, hopefully, I don't know. Um, so, uh, I might not be able to get a lot of materials for nerf modding, um, right now. So, uh, probably it'll be, probably about, maybe even a month before I get to my next upload. Uh, so, yeah, um, thank you for the few people that watch me. <laughs> And uh, this has been Jack Nerf, signing out from his incredibly long idiotic ramblings.